I was a lieutenant in charge of patrol at the time, and I was actually just pulling into my driveway when my uh, patrol sergeant called me. He was on the scene of this of this call, and uh, very very competent investigator. We were detectives together at one time, and he said, "Hey, I need you to come out to this scene because what I'm seeing here is not end up." So from the very beginning, did did you smell a rat here? Yeah, there were certain things, especially that night that uh, some nuances and things that just didn't seem right. And quite frankly, um, her husband, you know, oftentimes uh, or not, the husband's involved in these disappearances. And he actually, his actions and things he did that day kind of were leading us towards him. Well, let's start unraveling this. So first, take a listen to the 911 call Keith made when he discovered Sherry was gone. 911, what is your emergency? CHP transfer. Keith is on the line. Hello, can I help you? Hello? Yeah, um, so uh, I just got home from work and uh, my wife wasn't there, which is unusual, and my kids should have been there by now from like daycare. So I was like, oh, maybe she went on a walk. I couldn't find her, so I called the, the daycare to see what time she picked up the kids. The kids were never picked up, so I got freaked out, so I hit like the Find My iPhone app thing. And it said that her, it showed her phone like at our end of our driveway. We don't have really good service. Okay. Uh, not the end of our driveway, but the end of our street. So I just drove down there and I saw her phone with her headphones because she started running again. And it's, her, I found her phone and it's got like hair ripped out of it, like in the headphones. So I'm like totally freaking out thinking like somebody okay, like what's your, grabbed her. Okay, what's your address? I guess he went driving down the street and he saw these sitting on the side of the road. Yes, um, and that was another thing that kind of stuck out in my mind when I was talking to him because he had the forethought to take a photograph of how he found the phone. And when I asked him why he did that, he said that um, he'd want to be a detective and thought that it was important for him to take an evidence photograph prior to collecting it. Yeah. Now, knowing all we know now, it's almost scary how convincing she was telling her story to police right after she returned home. Take a look at this and see how convincing she was. This is hard. The first day with the zip ties, getting out of them because they were behind, they were behind my back. So I pulled them. I did one of these moves. And that's what this scar right there is from, is the very beginning, when I got them off. There was a chain around my waist. Okay. Um, so the chain had... The shot here. Okay, sorry. The chain, the chain... So, here's a pretty stick figure. Let's draw the whole room. You want to do that? Sure. We'll lay up the whole room. There was this... Pull, stupid pull that's attached here, came down like all the way up. The pull is the only reason why I was there. The cable was here, and it made a turn. I'm sorry for swaying. And then the cable, I could reach all the way to the bed, couldn't reach the door, couldn't reach the window, could reach the bed. There was a um, uh, at all times, there was a bucket in the um, closet. That's what I used to go to the bathroom in. Hey, the whole time she's saying all this, it, it, it's all made up. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mark, when something like this happens, this makes it tough for real victims, right? Without question. Listen, I would zealously defend her and anyone accused of a crime because that's my job. As a human being, I find her behavior abhorrent. I think that she got off light. I think that she sets back victims in future investigations. And worse, law enforcement, they have precious hours that they devoted to her And quite frankly, I don't think that she was sentenced enough. Do you have a story or a question for me? Click the link in the description and tell me what in the world is going on.